Okay, and welcome back students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. And we're continuing continuing on with the chapter 10 word problems, the odd number problems. And we finished, uh, let's get the slide here. Uh, come on, slide, slide, there we go. We're on now, um, we finished 15 and 17 in the previous video, so now we're on 19. Okay, my ink pen. All right, and it says here, Gordon Roselle went to his bank to find out how long it will take for $1,200 to amount to $1,650 at 8% simple interest. Please solve Gordon's problem. Round time and years to the nearest tenth. Okay, this here is a good example of a word problem. Remember, in word problems, when we're solving them, um, there's information that's directly related to solving a problem. There's information that has nothing to do with solving a problem. And there's information that needs to be manipulated in order to solve a problem. Right? Um, and I had said that in doing these simple interest calculations, these, these word problems, it's basically you know, the same procedure that you went through when you were doing the drill problems. And uh, honestly, it is. The only difference being is, is that these are word problems and we have to take into consideration these things uh, in order to determine what the actual amounts of the variables are. And this is a good problem for that. Okay, um, but let's go about uh, solving this. So it, it says Gordon went to the bank to find out how long. Okay, now remember the formula was um, interest is equal to principal times rate times time. And it's asking us how long it will take for a $1,200, for $1,200, which would be a principal amount, to amount to 1650 at 8% interest, simple interest. That's the rate, okay? Um, the round time in years and to the nearest tenth. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we want to find out how long. So uh, we're going to, instead of memorizing the formula, like I had said, if you, you, if you know this formula, it's easy to figure out the other ones. So you say, okay, I want to find the time and whenever you're looking for principal or rate or time, you always put the interest in the numerator, and then whatever you have left over goes in the denominator. Now notice I have time here and interest here, so all I have left is the principal times the rate. So principal times the rate. Okay. Now the question becomes, well, what are my variables? Okay. And it says here I have $1,200. Well, that's my principal, right? So my principal was 1200 and I know my rate is 8%. Okay, but now the question becomes, what is my interest? Now, again, going back to the word problem, you know, $1,200 is direct information. 8% is direct information. Okay, we don't have anything in here that doesn't belong, but we do have information that does need to be manipulated. If someone looks at this here, 1650, and they say, oh, it doesn't have anything to do with the problem, meaning it's not applicable, then they would throw it out and they would be wrong. But in this case, you know, they get the problem wrong or the calculation wrong. Um, but in this case here, um, we need to find our interest and this $1,600, 1650, is going to be used to help manipulate the data in order to come up with what we need to be able to solve. So if I have $1,200 in principle and it grows to 1650, okay, the difference between the two has to be the interest. So if I take 1650 and I subtract 1200, I end up with $450 as my interest. Right? And that's what I mean by manipulating the data in order to get a piece of direct information. Right, so now when we uh, do the math here, we keep our 450 in the numerator, and 8% of 1,200 is $96. I'm sorry, 96. And then we divide the 450 by the 96, and we end up with, uh, let's see here, 450 divided by 96. We end up with um, 4... 0.68, and it says round to the nearest tenth. So um, I look at my tenths, look to the right. Eight is greater than five, so we round up. So we round up to 4.7 years, and that's our answer. Okay. 
All right, if uh, I'm not going to go over that one again, um, pause and rewatch the video if uh, you missed something. And then if you still don't understand something, feel free to contact an instructor, okay? All right, um, word problem 10-21. Okay. It says here, on April 5th, 2014, Janine took out an 8.5% loan for 20000 So that's my rate, and that's my principal. When it's telling me on April 5th, 2014, I know that's going to be my time. All right, it has to do with my time. The loan is due March 9th of 2015. Now pay attention to that. Um, we're talking about April 5th of 2014, and it's due on March 9th, 2015. Okay. It says use ordinary interest. So we're going to use the 360 as part of our time calculation to calculate the interest. What total amount will Janssen pay on March 9th? Well, so that what total amount is the maturity value, right? So we're going to use the interest is equal to principal times rate times time formula, which we've been using, you know, in all of these past problems. And we want to know what the total amount is. So that's our maturity value calculation, which is principal plus interest. Okay. So let's work out the problem. First, we need to get our interest first in order to be able to determine our maturity value. So um, we have $20,000 times our rate is 8.5%. And so remember, 8.5%, that's a percent. And to convert it into a decimal, we move the decimal over two places. So we end up with 0 0.085 as decimal form. And then we have to consider our, our time. Remember, this is principal, this is rate, and now we're looking at time. So the time says we're going to use ordinary interest. So we put in the denominator the 360. But now we have to figure out the number of days. Okay? And this is one of these here uh, considerations where um, I'm going to go up to and use the Julian calendar, the exact number of days calendar. And, and especially since it, it goes from, you know, from one year into the next year. Okay? It's just easier to use here in this situation. So let's get up to the calendar. And we were looking at April 5th. So here's April, here's the 5th, which is 95, uh, day number 95. And we're going into the next year. So we subtract the 95 from 365. So that's 270 days. And remember, since we got down to December 1st, now we're going to start up here at January 1st, and we have to go all the way to March 9th. Let me change colors here. So we're going to go to all the way to March 9th. So that's the March column. 9th is an additional 68 days. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to add 68 more days, and I end up with 338 days. That's the difference in days for that time period. So I now put the 338 days into the numerator. And it's basically just doing all of the math like we did before. So 20,000 times 0 0.085 times 338 gives me 574,600. And that's all over 360 days. And when we divide that 574,600 by 360, we end up with um, 1,596 dollars and 11 cents. So that's my interest. Okay, that's the interest. Now we want to know what the maturity value is. Well, the maturity value. All right, is the principal of twenty thousand plus the interest of fifteen ninety six eleven, and so that means the maturity value is twenty one thousand five hundred ninety six eleven. Okay, 
that simple. Notice that you know it's all the same kind of process, the same procedure, but you can't you know copy cookie cutter from what's in the book. I mean you have to understand the concepts and be able to apply the idiosyncrasies with each and every every problem. You know, sure. Once we, um, uh, you know, we we had to determine the idiosyncrasy for this problem is, is we had to determine how many days, and that went across, you know, the the, you know, uh, the entire the end of the year, and also it was 360 for ordinary interest. Okay, but other than that, it's you know the the same procedure as we have been doing in the past for the others. And I said it on the last video and the video before, and it's really basically that simple. But you have to watch for, like I said, the idiosyncrasies, like I had in the previous problem of having to calculate the interest. Okay, um, you know that's something that had to be manipulated. So, with that said, I'm going to stop here with uh, 221 and pick up with, I'm not 221, 1021, and pick up with 1023 in the next video.